Now, when we look back at Wrestler of the Year, Wrestler of the Year is hard because I think you sort of have to define what Wrestler of the Year means. Does it mean high work rate? Does it mean lots of matches? Does it mean biggest box office draw? How do you define Wrestler of the Year when you vote in stuff like this? Uh, it's so difficult, man, because for me, I I'm big on work rate, right? And entertainment in the match. Um, I would, like, yeah, you know, it it's hard. Like, I, I know the easy answer here is Roman. Yeah. Right? It has to be. The easy answer is Roman. Because Except he only wrestled, ten, like, 10 matches or ex something. Exactly. He only wrestled, like, a handful of matches. So... I can't, I can't go with him, but I would have to say, I mean, if you're going based on just being the backbone of the company, it would have to be John Moxley. Easy. So Easy. I think, I think how, and this, we'll, we'll see what happens in the Wrestling, Wrestling Observer Reader Awards. I think all three, I think both of those two and Will Ospreay are going to rank very highly in that Luthez Ric Flair award. But like, this goes back to, the mid eighties, right? Where it was like Hogan or flair. Who's the wrestler of the year, Hogan or flair. And from a pro wrestling matches standpoint, the guy who wrestled so many X number of times a year, you know, that's flair. Sure. Is it the guy who drew the most money on pay-per-view? But well, that's Hogan. And, and so that we're always, I feel like we're going to always have this dichotomy about what this award really means. Yeah. I, I, and, I don't think, listen, I, I think to you, to me, it could be a different answer. I, I would say uh, tag team of the year. I would go with FTR. I know there's an argument for the Usos, but I would say FTR. The acclaimed uh, as well should be up there. The, accla uh, the acclaimed as well. I think the rise, I think like the rise of the acclaimed is is a great story. But yeah, absolutely. I, I, but if you're going, who drew? Who was the biggest draw in the business? It's Roman. Right. To is some people, Roman? you're going to say, well, I think it's Roman. I, I would say it's Roman because he is the one that carries those pay-per-views that he's on. But what was a bigger match for WrestleMania? Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns or Stone Cold Steve Austin and Kevin Owens? <laughs> I would say Stone Cold Steve Austin and Kevin Owens. You know what I would also say is Cody and Seth may have been equal to to. It, now, you didn't know. You kind of knew, but you didn't know. But that program, they did three. I think they did three pay per views in a row with that program, and that that may have been more. And they're going to do it again, Roman and you know, then Roman and Brock. But uh, and then this is not to discredit Roman because I love Roman. I've I've been I've been such a big Roman guy, and and finally getting to see him. Now he's never going to win over all the naysayers, right? Because there's so many people who are like. I've seen this guy on top since 2013 enough. And there will be those 2013, 14, 15, wh whatever, whenever you pick the start date for when they started pushing the crap out of Roman. But there will, there will always be people who are just not going to be into him. But I do like it that some people have crossed over and they're starting to give him his flowers. Cause I just think he's a great talent who was saddled with, you know, WWE pushing him when the fan base wasn't really ready for him to be pushed in the yeah. way that he does. Well, it was this, it was this John Cena. It was a John Cena uh, project, right? It was the same thing. You keep him as a baby face, you push, 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 push. And then the fans don't want it. Yeah. Uh, and he, they were able to kind of rehab that and, and make him into a very dominant heel that everybody loves. I don't, you know, to me, I, you know, in talking this out, I would say it's John Moxley hands down because of all the work he did in the in rest in the wrestling business, not just for AEW, what he did for New Japan, what he did for the Indies. Uh, he he very much was all over the place. He was GCW champion. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> while he's on AEW, I, just a wacky wacky year for pro wrestling but i think that's what that kind of makes him the guy the man you know nobody worked and you got to give it to jericho also yeah jericho he doesn't have to do this anymore he doesn't he and he could be a guy that says i'm putting myself over i'm i'm an established star i've i've done it all f you pay me and he's not doing that he he's working with younger talent 
you know, I, I think for a lot of people, people come into have their own bias when it comes to talent, what they like, what they don't like. But mm -hmm. you got to acknowledge a lot of this stuff. You know, you got to see what it's done uh, for wrestling. I think John Moxley, for sure, most valuable player. I John think maybe Moxley would have been that guy if this didn't happen. You know, if the CM Punk injuries didn't happen and he didn't lose his mind in that scrum, I maybe CM Punk would have been the guy. Yeah. So as we know, Moxley was, uh, you know, had to had to put over Punk, and and Punk was going to be the guy, and he did. And then when it didn't happen, and all hell broke loose at uh, All Out, then they had to go back to Moxley. And so he was very valuable to them. You can't just make anybody champ. Like you could have probably done it with Jericho. You could have done it with Moxley. Ha probably not with Hangman. Cause I, I felt, you know, after uh, he lost the championship, he, there was a little bit of all the, th all the good things that, that he gained, uh, you know, they did not follow after he lost his championship. So it's probably Jericho and Moxley are the only two guys and you don't want to put Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, I'm sorry, in that situation because you want his, if he does get a, a championship when you want it to be the first one and you want to celebrate that, so you wouldn't shoehorn him in there. But yeah, like Moxie was very valuable to just making sure that the, you know, the company was in a bad situation that they still have not, I, I don't think they've come back from it yet with that CM Punk scenario there. So he had to kind of make sure that they didn't miss even more steps than they did. And that's why, you know, that's when he showed his value big time. I would probably pick Moxley. But then again, there's all these Will Ospreay matches that I didn't see that are that are really great, supposedly, from what everyone says. And so you can't really, you know, you can't really disconnect him from that scenario. It's just that he worked for New Japan and, you know, he's not yeah, working in the United States. That long. He did work at Forbidden Door. 